Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you for coming. Class tonight is uh, going to be a little nosy. We're going to talk about the nose. And, um, I mean, basically in a uh, physical sense, the part of the face through which a person or animal smells or breathes is our nose. People don't realize a nose can smell over one trillion scents and also plays a part in tasting and hearing. If a person can't smell, he doesn't taste right, he doesn't hear right. It's amazing how God has put together a person. So that's on a physical plane. You know, I think that we kind of think that, like the word shema to hear, that our mouth and our ears are important um, parts of our being that we need to serve God, things that deal with sanctity. What about the nose? Does the nose really have anything to do with sanctity at all? Um, I always find it interesting why God would have given us a nose, something that drips, that goes over our mouth. So what, what's this all about? What is a nose? Why did God give us a nose? What, how does it connect, as everything does, to serving God and to sanctity? The even in the womb, it says that there is an angel that teaches a child in the womb all of the Torah. And then before the child's born, every one of us has an indentation just below our nose, where the evil angel, that Yetzirah that we all are born with, as we come out of the womb with all of this knowledge, all of this Torah, the angel touches us right there and we forget it all. And then our job in life is to try, try to recreate, to get back all of that knowledge that we had when we had, were in the womb. In fact, that's one of the reasons for what we have is called the Shalom Zohar, where we have a party, so to speak, to lament and make the newborn baby feel better about the fact that he lost all of his Torah in the womb. So where does this idea of the nose begin? So if we go to Breshit, in Genesis with the creation of man, it says very clearly that when God created man, man was the lowest of all creation, in that all creation, when it was created, was created with a spirit of life. Whereas man was put together by God like a lifeless doll, formed out of the dust of the earth, but with no life form. And then the Pasuk says, the verse says, the Yipak of Ruach that God breathed within the man this breath of life. And this is where we receive the soul, this is where we receive the life force that all human beings have. Now, when someone is lost his breath, someone who was not breathing, what we do is we give mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. We don't breathe in a person's nose. So why is it that God, if God wanted to blow this breath of life into Adam, into first man's body, why didn't he blow into man's mouth rather than into his nose? Now, truth of the matter is, in fact, the Rashbi, Rabbi Shem Bayachoy, the author of the Zohar, said that just like we have two eyes, two ears, two nostrils, man should have been created with two mouths. And he quickly corrected himself. He said he, two mouths, one would be for the mundane and one would be for things that have a sanctity to them, things that have a kedusha. But he corrected himself and said, no, if a person had two mouths, he'd use them both for the mundane. Better he only has one. And God, when he gave us a mouth, gave us two, two fences, two walls, the teeth, a hard wall, and the lips, a soft one, to try to get us to be careful about what we say. So in some way or another, the nose seems to be pristine, which is, how do we see that? The Zohar tells us that Kedusha, sanctity, enters a person's body through his nostrils. How do we see that? And why? We know that when man, first man was created, he was given a command not to eat from the tree of knowledge. That was the only mitzvah, the only commandment that he had and he did eat from it. But he did more than eat. He used four of his senses to sin with the tree of knowledge. Number one is first, he 
saw the fruit, that the fruit tasted good, that it looked good. So he used his eyes. He listened to his wife as she told him about the tree of knowledge. Again, to Chava. And that's his ears. She gave it to him, which is touch. And he ate from it again, which is taste. But no place does it say that he smelled the fruit. So the sense of smell was not tainted by this first sin which brought death into the world of eating from the tree of knowledge. In fact, more than that, that we see that when a sacrifice is brought in the, or was brought in the temple, it was called a reach nichoach lashem, a sweet savor to God, which is amazing. Somehow, some way, the only true joy that a neshama, that a soul has in this world, and which is God Almighty Himself, is the sense of smell. And in fact, we see that the two illustrious sons of Aaron, Nadab and Avihu, that when they sinned, that they were killed by being burned to death. But not burning in the sense of an exterior fire that burned their body. There were two strands of fire that entered their nostrils and burnt them on the inside. Again, a spiritual death for two people that were that illustrious. Not only that, we see that when we do Havdalah, that when the Shabbat leaves, that we have a tradition that on the Shabbat, each of us receives what's called a Nishama Yaseira, a extra soul. And after the Shabbat, that soul leaves. And when that soul leaves, we need to be resuscitated. And what we do is at the service of the Havdalah, we make a bracha on wine because we believe the tree of knowledge was a grape. So we try to correct that. Fire was given to Adam, the first man on Saturday night, that after he had sinned with the tree of knowledge, the sun did not set for 36 hours on the, sh on the Shabbat. It does not say it was morning and e evening and morning on the seventh day. It was light the whole time. And when the sun set Saturday night, Adam, first man, thought that God was punishing him for eating from the tree of knowledge and that the world would be in darkness. And God assured him this was a natural occurrence and he showed him how to make fire, which is why we make the bracha on Havdalah. And while we're talking about it, we also cover our thumbs and we look at our nails because man's body, when he first was created before he sinned, was covered with the same cover we have on our nails. And that's what we look at. And we look at the fire reflecting off of our nails. And we cover our thumbs because man, when he was cursed at the, with, the, with the earth, he did not have thumbs. Noah was the first one who was born with a thumb. And that's why we see in the portion that the, he was given relief. And again, the word Noah as well. So, but we, so we make the brach on wine. We make the brach on fire since fire was introduced Saturday night. And strangely, we make a brach on pisamim on spices. We smell something like smelling salts because it's a shock to our spiritual system when that soul leaves. And the only thing that will resuscitate the soul is a sweet savor, a sweet smell. So just like a sacrifice that is brought on the altar is a reach nichoach l'ashem, a sweet savor to God, so too, somehow, some way, that smell that we have makes the body, makes the soul within us that's still there feel better about the fact that we lost that extra soul which was a gift for the Shabbat. But again, how do we physically see this holiness? Because the nose just seems like it's a nose. How do we see Kedusha? How do we see spirituality in the nose? If you look at your nose, it's interesting that it's shaped like an upside down shin, the second to the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Now, in the gematrios, in the numerical values, everything, every, every letter has a, has a number. And the numerical value of God's name, of mercy, the yud ke vav ke, the name we do not pronounce, we say Hashem, meaning the name, in lieu of saying the actual way it's pronounced. 
So the Yud Kei Vav Kei has a numerical value of 26. Again, the holiest name of God. In the Atbash, which is a coded way of counting, that you take the first letter Aleph for the last letter Tav. There's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet that can be exchanged. So the Aleph for Tav, the uh, base for a Shin called Atbash. In the Atbash, if you take the Yud Kei Vav Kei, which is the numerical value of 26, it now has a value of 300. 300 is the numerical value of the letter Shin. So our nose is shaped like an upside down Shin, which alludes to the fact of the Yud Kei Vav Kei, of God's name of mercy. And that's why the Zohar says that Kedusha, that sanctity, enters through a person's nostrils, through his nose. And somehow, some way, even though we may not understand it, but that orifice has a connection to great sanctity that we have in our connection for God. And our thoughts and how we think, again, when a sacrifice was brought, a person would have to have proper thoughts. And the same thing when we pray. In fact, when a person does a mitzvah, a tzaddik can actually smell a person. He can smell the mitzvah that the person does. It's a famous story told of uh, Rabbi Malik of Lezensk that in the middle of davening, he was smelling the air. Almost like a, you think like a, an animal getting a scent. And after the prayers, it was during Sukkot, he went over to his brother, Reb Zusha. He said, Zusha, did you smell it? Did you smell it? And he said, yes. He says, where's it coming from? And they traced it to a man who was in the back of the shul, in the back of the synagogue, who had a talit over his head and was praying. And they waited for him to finish, and they said to him, what great mitzvah did you do? that this smell is coming from you. And he said, I don't know. They say, maybe it's your esrig. It was during Sukkot, the um, fruit that he was holding. And he said, it can't be, because mine is just an average esrig. It's not, usually I get an expensive one, but not this year. And they said, no, no, no. It's very special. And he said, I don't know how. They said, where were you coming from? He said, every year what I do is I work all year and I make a hundred glutens and I give 50 to my wife and I keep 50. And then what I do is I go to Lemberg to the fair and with those 50 glutens what I do is I buy a very expensive esrig and I come back to my town and everybody shares with my esrig this beautiful esrig that I buy. But this year as I was walking to Lemberg, because I didn't want to waste any money even taking a carriage. I stopped off at an inn to get something, refreshments. And a man came in while I was there, a big burly man. And he was a wagon driver. And he sat down and began talking to the innkeeper. And he was telling his woes to the innkeeper, and he told the innkeeper, what am I going to do? I have a family with eight children. And my horse just died. How am I bala gola? How can I be a wagon keeper without a horse? And the innkeeper says, you know what? I have a horse in the barn. I'll sell it to him for 75 glutens. So he says, 75? Might, might as well be a million. Or am I going to get 75 glutens? And when the man wasn't looking, I called the, bar, the innkeeper over. And I said to him, you know what? How about I give you 48 glutens? And you give him a break on the price and give him the, give him the horse. And the innkeeper looked and looked back at the wagon driver and he said, you know what, okay. But I said, don't do it till I leave. And I gave him the 48 and I went to Lemberg. And when I got to Lemberg for two glutens, I bought this esterix. So I don't know what smells so good. And Remelik said, let me tell you what the whole story is. You don't know the whole story. When you left, this innkeeper was sure that you were Elio Anavi, Elijah the prophet, who came and gave him this horse. And in heaven, all the prayers of all of the nation of Israel were waiting at the gates of, the, of heaven, and they couldn't break through. Satan was there holding back the gates, not letting their prayers come through. But when you gave this wagon keeper, this, this wagon driver, the money to buy the horse. 
What he did was he got on the wagon and he went with this new horse and he took his whip and he said, God, I love you. How can I thank you for giving me this horse, for taking care of my family? And he took his whip and he cracked it in the air. And he said, God, this is for you. Once. And then again, cracked it again and said, God, this is for you. And then a third time, God, this is for you. And in heaven, heaven had this wagon driver coming down the road to heaven. And all these prayers were stuck at the gate. And when he cracked the whip the first time, the gate shook. And he cracked it a second time and the gate shook even more. And on the third time when he cracked the whip, the gates moved open wide and all the prayers of Israel came in and were answered because of what you did and this wagon driver. That's what we smell. So not only is a mitzvah something that's an act, but it's something that a person who has deep perception of kedusha, of holiness, can actually smell. And it's a reyak nichoach. It's a sweet savor to God. This is how God, this is an enjoyment of the soul. The only enjoyment that the soul has in this world is the sense of smell. And why is it that our nose, that which drips over our mouth, so to speak, why is it upside down? And it's not upside down. Heaven is holy enough. Our job is to bring heaven down to earth, to sanctify the earth that we walk on. And what drips from our nose is not mucus. What drips from our nose is the kedusha that we build up. And hopefully that moves into our lips and allows us to speak in a proper way and do things in a proper way and influences our life. So that when we walk around, what we do is we are something that brings a sweet scent to God and to the world and elevates everything. So that it's a world of a reach nichoach, of a sweet savor to God. Not just a nose, but something connected to a deep sense of holiness. As the Zohar says, that all Kedusha enters through our nostrils. May God help us to elevate all parts of our body, even those we don't understand, because nothing in life is without a purpose. Thank you very much for coming. God bless and have a good Shabbat.